Hi, my name is Skinner, and I make these paintings. I'm an absurd little man, and I just do things that agitate the undercurrent of the universe. My mom thinks it's all right, though. She thinks it's cool, so. I'm really concerned about people. I'm concerned about animals and things. And I'm not really into celebrating torture or the destruction of any, you know anything or whatever. I think ideologically, I think the planet should just be like cute rabbits and cats only, and like elephant, baby elephants and stuff, like no humans. But that's not really what's going on. So I have to be reality based. That's what everybody keeps telling me. Get back into reality and realize that it's not going to just be a world of kittens and baby elephants. But for now, what I've been doing is painting on wood, painting on paper, and making masks and sculptures and stuff that are all sort of an amalgamation of growing up as a, as a strange kid in the 80s, being into comics and art, and living in sort of like the social culture of like freaking out, I don't know, maybe some nuclear stuff's going on, and I think we were all kind of worrying together about what was going to happen, what may be happening, you know, I don't know. So my artwork kind of it depicts that. It's sort of like, here I am, you know, 20 years later, still feeling weird and disenfranchised and not understanding the world that's even happening now. You know, growing up, it's like sort of like everything's sort of unpredictable and violent. Well, that's how it is now. That's how this world is now. And so I'm just like, oh, I'm making artwork that's sort of at odds with the universe and, and at odds with humanity and what's going on. And, and so if that's what I have to deal with, if I can't have my way and have this planet be covered with cute animals, then I'm going to make horror, horrifying art, okay? Because that's how I feel. I feel frustrated from making artwork based on those emotions. Uh, growing up in Auburn, which is a small, like a rural city, they, there's no comic book shops. I remember like being so happy when a comic book shop finally opened there. But I remember just basically falling in love with Marvel Comics and the Hulk and just, I just liked it. I've never been a DC guy. Yeah, I think that's one thing is that Marvel characters were kind of based on an internal struggle and there was like an internal dialogue. How dorky and cheesy that was. I mean, it's like the Hulk, like I'm angry, I misunderstood, you know, it's like, how far can you really take that? I thought it was cool. I love the Hulk, you know, but, you know, Superman, it's like, what's, what's the deal with Superman? People are like Superman. Why do you like Superman? He's good. Like, that's his thing. He's good and he can do anything. I'm like, that doesn't really make for like a whole lot of like, di like dynamics and internal struggle. And like, how do you relate to that, really? I have a book called Every Man Is My Enemy. Yeah, it's my first full, like, published book that looks legitimate. <laughs> that is really amazing, and I was, I was super lucky to have, to have that done. I had a little baby book, the Butcher King's book with Alex Hardy, but this is my only, just me, like, four years of work with some drawings from when I was a kid, and photos of my animals, and just my life, and whatever. And I like it because it's like the book that the kids are going to get taken away at school because it's too crazy. Like they take it to school and they're like, oh, this is cool. And then the teacher's like, what the hell is that? And they like take it away and the kid's like, eh. Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn. I love it here. I love the city. I have envisioned New York to, to be this mystical place my whole life growing up. Cotton Candy Machine is one um, example of how an artist uh, will get their friends together and say, hey, let's form a company instead of, you know, asking other companies to do it for us. So it's sort of like a really autonomous way of doing things. Everybody that is represented inside the cotton candy machine are either friends or somebody who's just been doing their thing for a long time or people that are really care about their craft and their art. And it's like, oh, you're really great. I like you. You should, like, can we, you know, have you in our store, you know? And so I like coming here. I was just thinking, couple minutes ago that it is it's cool it's like uh, oh I can come here and do my weird thing and not have to deal with any kind of uh, bigger you know gallery politics if, if I'm dealing with people I don't know or something especially if I'm in New York or so far away from home I'm like oh god I hope they I hope they don't find out I'm just an insane homeless man who just draws monsters so I come here okay, I already know I'm an insane homeless man 
And so I've accepted from the gate. I know, now here I am doing my thing, you know, and uh, hanging out. I get, and everybody's really sweet and encouraging, and I like that. And it's just like a kind of a safe environment. I love this place. I love Sean, I love Todd. Everybody working here is amazing. There's different places all around the United States. I've met these little batches of friends in Grass Hut or Zero Friends, Cotton Candy Machine. Different, different little places where there's creative people that gather and they're like, hey, you're like us, you're weird, let's do this thing, you know? And clearly I'm not making logos for like Google or something or Yahoo or like designing art for Star Wars movies or something, so. But maybe I am, maybe I am doing, maybe I am designing a Jar Jar Binks action series and you don't know about that. How do you feel about that?